Me too. Hello, my friends. Good day. Hello. My name is Raya Papaya, and I am so excited to have you joining us today or joining me today out here. Whew. You can notice I am outside right now. And I know you're inside probably watching this, but I want you to imagine that you're out here with me, breathing in the beautiful air out here. Now, before we get too much into this, I wanted to share a few little details. First of all, I'd like to introduce Jasmine, who's helping out. Hey, Jasmine. Hello, Raya. Hello, everyone. And secondly, I wanted to mention that um, if you are a teacher, and you're just tuning in and you don't know, we actually have a worksheet for students. They can, you can do it afterwards. And so there's a link that'll go up in the chat where you can sign up to get the worksheet. Um, so that is available as well. If you have questions, my friends, please um, ask them. Your teachers, if they're able to get onto YouTube, can put the questions in the chat and we will answer them at the end. And what else did I want to mention? Um, worksheet, questions. We're gonna have a lot of fun today. That's the bottom line. We're gonna have so much fun exploring. Now, I have a question for all of you. What time of year is it? What season is it? It's kind of chilly. It's not too cold today, but it's kind of chilly. There is white stuff all over the ground here and on the trees, there's snow. And so it is winter. It is winter, my friends. And in the winter, oh my gosh, I love, love, love the winter. I love getting all bundled up with my hat. Usually I wear mittens because it's not so cold. I'm not wearing them. Um, I love getting bundled up and going outside to explore in the winter. That's what we're doing today. Now, I'm kind of speaking loudly so you can hear me. So do you think that because I'm speaking so loudly, are we going to see a lot of animals today or would they be scared of me? They might be scared of hear the loud voice, right? Um, and they might hear me from a far distance and they'll just say, oh, you know, we're going to stay cozy in our homes. And so even though we might not see animals today, we are going to look for clues of animals. I'd like all of you, please, to take your detective hat in your hands and put it on your head. Make sure your det detective hat is nice and tight because we are going to be detectives looking for clues. I have my imaginary magnifying glass nice and round I can look through. And we're all going to use our magnifying glasses to look for clues. So let's get started. What kinds of animal clues can we look for? Well, some of my favorites, my friends, are tracks and scat. Tracks and scat. And I'm going to share with you what kinds of tracks we might look for. Now, tracks. Ooh, can you see my boot? Oh. <laughs> tracks are what animals leave behind when they step in different places. So I'm going to share with you some of the tracks we can look for. I'm turning my camera around. Let's see how this goes. Boop. It's pointing in all different directions. One moment, my friends. There we go. And I made up some tracks to show you what we can look for. So this is a type of animal track. And how many toes does this animal have? How many do you count? One, two. This animal has two toes. So for this animal, we're going to look for tracks that have two toes. This animal also has pretty long legs because look how far apart their tracks are when they're stepping. They're kind of far apart. So an animal has to have long legs to make tracks that are far apart. Any guesses who this animal might be? I'll give you one more clue. This animal has antlers. Jasmine, can you show a picture of this animal, please? My friends, if you said deer, you are correct. These tracks are for a white-tailed deer. Everybody say deer. One, two, three. Deer. Excellent. Okay. So we're looking for tracks that have two toes and are kind of far apart. Let's do some exploring. We're looking at the ground because tracks are what we're looking for, and they are found usually on the ground. <laughs> you can, if an animal climbs a tree, you can find tracks on the tree maybe. There's some plants here. And, oh, I think oh, these tracks are kind of far apart. And it looks like the animal really had to step in, in, in to the deep snow and lift their feet a lot, lift their legs a lot to move around. 
I think they might have been coming this way. So we can't see the toes because they're tucked in. Let me turn the camera around past where I'm standing. And let's see if we can find a track that can show us the two toes. Oh, Raya, you just stepped on one. Let me dig out some of the snow from this one and see if the toes are in there. All right, I'm going to back up and we'll explore the tracks we were just looking at to see how many toes they have. How many toes do you have, tracks? There are lots of tracks here. So I think we're going to have a great time finding one that I can show you. Aha. I did step on the one I meant to show you, my friends. That was Raya's fault. But if we look at this hole here, really deep track. I'll clear some of this snow on the edge away. And we can see that there's kind of, yeah, there's, i get my finger in there. There's a toe that's really easy to see here, a toe mark. And there's another one on this side. So there are two toe tracks in that track. What do you think? Is that a deer? Oh, here's another one. This is easier to tell. Get my camera angled up. How many toe holes? One, two. So if you think that this track belongs to a deer, give a nice big thumbs up. Thumbs up, everybody. Yes, that is a deer track. Excellent. All right. Now you have been listening. Whoop. For quite some time so we are going to get you moving and i am going to ask you to pretend that you are a deer you're going to stand up don't run around in your classroom but stand up where you are and what you need to do i'll make this a little bit higher what you need to do if you're a deer with long legs is lift your legs high We'll make our deer out in the antlers. We've got our deer antlers. And we're lifting our legs nice and high to walk through the snow, my friends. Everybody lift your legs nice and high with your antlers on your head. Good job, everybody. Three more steps. One, two, three. Yay. Everybody have a seat again on the carpet or at your desks. Have a seat again. We'll look for more. Whew, okay, so I said some of my favorite clues are tracks and scat. Well, we saw some tracks, but what on earth could scat be? Check this out. Little brown treats that an animal left behind. And if you're thinking, Raya, are you really showing us something about the bathroom? Yes, Raya is really showing you something about the bathroom. This is animal poop. This right here is deer poop. And deer poop, if you notice, it's kind of like an oval shape. So it's sort of roundish, but it's not a perfect circle. Kind of like an oval shape, maybe a little bit like an egg shape. And scat is the fancy word for animal poop. So what I'm going to ask you to do, bring this camera up again. Whoop. There we go. Hello. What I'm going to ask you to do is whenever we come across scat today, if we see any scat, then I want you to go, hmm, interesting scat. Okay. Some people might go, ew, yucky poo. But we're scientists. We're detectives. And we're going to be more scientific about it. So on three, well, I'll practice. Ready? One, two, three. Hmm, interesting scat. Thinking hard, so we're stroking our chin. Let's practice it when we actually look at this. Ready? Here we go. We're walking. We're walking. Boop, boop, boop. And what do we find? Hmm. Interesting scat. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Well done. Whew. All right. We're going to have a lot of funny angles today as I move around. Now, the next... <laughs> the next thing I wanted to show you was another animal's tracks. And they're kind of blowing in the wind. Give me one moment. Okay. Huh. 
I've lost one of them entirely. So this animal, I set them out and then the wind took them. This animal has some feet that look like this. They're pretty big. And some of their feet, their tracks look like this. So this is interesting. They have really big back feet and much smaller front feet. And the way this looks on the ground when they're stepping is, I'm looking, I still can't, so I've lost a back foot. You'll have to use your imaginations, my friends. Leaning my camera down. The way this looks on the ground is that if you see this track, the back foot is, and the other back foot would be here. So the back feet are in front of the front feet when you see their tracks. Whoops. And that's really interesting. What this means is that this animal, they're a big jumping animal, and this animal will use their very, very, very strong back feet to leap and jump to the next spot. And that's why their back feet are in front. This animal, my friends, has long ears and they have a little cotton ball kind of tail, but they have long ears and they're very, very quiet. Any guesses who this animal is? Jasmine can show a picture. This is a rabbit, yes. Rabbits have large back feet, small front teeth, and they're excellent, excellent jumpers. Now, I'm going to demonstrate for you what this can look like. First of all, I'm collecting these. I don't want them to blow away. And I, I want to make sure you can see my feet because I want you to do this afterwards. Your back feet get planted on the, on the floor and your front feet go in behind your back feet. So everybody, oh, can you hear the wind? Woo. If you can please stand up again at your spot and see if you can do this. Get your back feet, your feet on the ground. Imagine your front, your hands are your front feet and try to squeeze your hands in between your back legs and sit like a rabbit. Looking around, smelling everything, your long ears. Oh, it's hard to do. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to topple over. Now you can stand up and stay standing, my friends, because I wanted to mention to you how rabbits move sometimes. So rabbits, when they are afraid that there's a predator coming, like an animal coming after them who wants to eat them for dinner, the rabbits will try to confuse the animal and they will jump in a zigzag way. So instead of running away in a straight line, they will jump over here and then to the other side and back and forth. So you're still standing, my friends. If you're not, stand up. And we're going to do five zigzag rabbit jumps. Ready? Everybody's ready? Here we go. Whew. Jump one side, jump to the other, and back. Let's do two more for good measure. One, two, and everybody have a seat again. <laughs> good job, my rabbit friends. Oh, that was wonderful. Okay, we've learned about rabbits, what their tracks look like, how they balance and how they jump. Now, let's look and see if we can find some clues about rabbits. I still have my detective hat on. I've got my magnifying glass. It's time to explore. So, again, my camera's flipping upside down. Oh, you silly camera. Flip right side up. There we go. Sorry, guys. And we're looking at the ground because that is where rabbits hang out. And huh, I think, it's hard to tell. I think these might be rabbit tracks. It looks like they were from a few days ago and the snow's melted a bit. But the reason I think that is because look at what's here. Hmm, interesting scat. There is actually rabbit scat. See how the, this one's round? The other one was more of an oval, and these are perfect little circles. There's a rabbit scat right here. So the rabbit looks like it hopped around, pooping out little scat bits. Jasmine, can you show what rabbit tracks look like when they're fresh? There we go. So we can see this one looks like maybe it was coming towards us. We can see 
um, the large prints and the small prints, and they're kind of grouped together. And the rabbit took really big jumps, so the prints are pretty far apart from each other. That is super cool. All right, excellent. Just while I'm here, I happen to notice this isn't about rabbits, but can you see what I noticed? There's a little tiny feather. So it looks like a bird maybe had a feather blow away in the wind. Oh my goodness. Whoa. More rabbits scat over here. Three little poops. Hmm. Interesting scat. <laughs> I love being a scientist. Okay. We are going to explore some more. Let's see where we find more clues. So we've got quite an interesting space here. A lot of tracks that we can check out. And you see my tracks here. I've been walking back and forth here a bit. Oh, and this is interesting. So some of the ways that animals leave clues behind is on plants. When we think about animals, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've eaten breakfast and I've eaten lunch. I like to eat and other animals like to eat too. So sometimes we can find little teeth marks. And rabbits especially, and deer, they like to chew on the sides of stems because these plants aren't dead. There's yummy green stuff in the middle. Sometimes they'll chew off the tops of plants like that. You can see the top's been chewed off. And Jasmine, I think, has a picture she can share with us of a whole lot of plants that were eaten by rabbits. You can see all those tracks. You can see that these stems have a lot of chew marks along the length of them. And so these rabbits have had a little, a little party where they've been chewing all together. All right, let's see if we can find some more evidence of animals chewing, animal teeth marks. I'm at the base of a tree. And if I come down, you know what? I'm gonna take my camera off of my tripod so I can show you something in more detail. Da, da, da. What is this? I see teeth marks. Do you see teeth marks? There are some really cool teeth marks here. And on the other side, so this looks like a nut or a seed, a nut where an animal has chewed open to get the seed. And I think, trying to get it in focus, the animal that might have done this is a beautiful squirrel with its fluffy, fluffy tail. That really doesn't want to be in focus. So we can see the teeth marks right at the edge. And if I can ask all of you, my friends, to pretend that you are a squirrel and you, you can stay sitting down, you don't have to get up, but do your best, like, show how you're chewing something. Everybody, make sure your teeth are nice and sharp and you're chewing the nut. Imagine you're chewing this. <laughs> Good job, everybody. While I was here, I happened to notice there was something else super cool here. This is why I love the winter. There's so much to find. There is a little tiny shell right there. So that's evidence that there must have been a snail. And there are even teeny tiny, oops, tiny, tiny, tiny ones here. That's so cool. This one's been here. The shell the animal They're good evidence. Okay. We are exploring. We're going to go in between these trees and step up, up, up. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. What else can we find back here? Oh, is that deer or rabbit? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> is it perfectly round or is it an oval? That is round. So that is rabbit. So there's been rabbits here too, but I think that there has been another animal here. Choo, choo, choo. Look at that, teeth marks. And this one too. Lots and lots of teeth marks that we can see. Well, that's interesting. This is pretty big. What kind of animal would have chewed a tree down that was so big? It starts with a B and rhymes with Ever. Show the picture, Jasmine. There we go. We've got a beaver chewing on wood. This one is walking with wood, bringing it home. And you can actually see their teeth marks when we look back at the stumps that they leave behind. So I am going to show you how this can work. 
I actually have a pretend beaver skull here, right in my hand. Let me just try to get it in one piece. So a pretend beaver skull, and look at those front teeth. My goodness, they are long and wonderfully sharp. So these teeth, see how there's two of them? There are two of them. So they can just chew to get the wood down and bring the tree down so they can make their lodge or make their home. And they leave these, these marks behind. Very cool. And that makes sense because check out where we are. We're not only by a forest, we are also by a lake. And right across the lake, I know that there's a beaver who lives over there. Very cool. Okay, let's keep exploring. Dun, da, da, da. How do I get out of here? Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness. I have so many more cool things to show you, my friends. I'm going to get my tripod back so we can do more fun moving around things. Now, as we are, oh my goodness, what did I find here? What did we find together? Let's have a look. Check this out. This is on a plant. There's a plant stem. There was an insect living inside the plant and something peck, peck, pecked at the plant to eat the insect inside. What animal does a good job pecking, my friends? Yes, a bird. So a bird pecked, pecked, pecked at this. That's not getting in focus. A bird pecked at it and ate the little grub inside. So show me your best pecking. Imagine you have to move your face, your nose is, your beak is doing the pecking. Peck, 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 peck. <laughs> and then yum, 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 yum. You got the yummy insect inside. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, as we keep exploring. I'm looking at these bushes now, these shrubs. And, oh, there's a, my, there's a very large stump over there. I think that's evidence, that's a clue that humans, maybe the tree was going to fall down and humans cut it to be safe. But earlier I spotted something super cool in here. Have a look at this. I can show you up close. <gasps> you might think, Raya papaya. What are you showing us? That looks like a dead leaf. There's another one back here. If I can get in here. Ah! Keep the wind from blowing it. I know it looks like a dead leaf, but my friends, guess what this was? There was an animal living inside of these before they grew up enough to come out. And what this is, in the summertime, is what it, what it looks like is this. I'll show you a picture, or I'll show you uh, in my hand. It looks like this. Can we get it in focus? So, this is a chrysalis. Everybody say chrysalis. One, two, three. Chrysalis. Yes. It's really not wanting to focus, though. And my friends, this chrysalis that we just saw, we saw it had a little bit of a ridge at the top. And we saw maybe you noticed it had a little kind of these lines at the back. I can show you again. Does it match? <laughs> it's a different color and it's a different size, but let's see if it matches. So we've got the lines at the back. We've got some lines at the top. And my friends, guess who came out of this chrysalis? Who is this? A butterfly, yes! So a monarch butterfly came out of the chrysalis when they grew up enough to fly around. And what I'm going to ask you to do is imagine that you are a butterfly inside the chrysalis. You're changing. You're growing. You're growing up inside there. It's very important to be in there. And then you come out as a butterfly. So stand up. I'm going to put you back on the tripod. There we go. Stand up, everybody. And there we go. First of all, you're inside the chrysalis and you're growing and you're starting to wiggle because you're grow you've already grown your wings and you're ready to crack open the chrysalis and come out. So we're all hugging ourselves because we're we're in there, nice and cozy. And when we come out, we want to start stretching, stretching, stretching our wings. Everybody stretch your wings, stretch your wings. And when you stretch your wings, 
then you want to slowly flap them to dry them out, kind of let them hang a little bit, dry out those butterfly wings for the monarch butterfly. And when they're dry, then you can flap and you can flap. Don't walk around the room, stay in your spot, but you can flap, flap, flap your wings. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Flapping everywhere. Oh, and you need a rest. And so you found a flower. It's springtime and you are drinking nectar and you're going for a rest. Have a seat again, my friends. <laughs> that was some really good flapping butterflies. Good job. All right. No, as you're sitting down, we are going to keep exploring. I think I'm going to take you off the tripod again. That's just easier to walk around that way. So. As we are exploring, I want you to think about these animals in winter that we've been talking about. If we're seeing tracks, that means the animals are, like they're still around, they're doing stuff in the winter. They're looking for food, they're jumping, they're having a good time. We've heard that there are some animals maybe that go to sleep all winter, right? Well, the ones we've been talking about, they're not sleeping all winter. They sleep when they're tired, but they are very active, which is super, super cool. Now there is one animal who does sleep for long times in the winter. They take long naps. And this animal um, who takes long naps, when they wake up after their long, long naps, then they'll go running around looking for food. And I'm gonna show you where we might find clues about this animal. So the animal I'm talking about is who climbs trees, who runs around trees in Toronto, and other parts of the city and the country, squirrels. So this animal is a squirrel. And up at the treetops is where you might see them running around. There we have our beautiful squirrel. And at the very, very treetops is where they might build a nest. And their nest looks like a big pile of leaves and sticks. There's a picture. This is from farther away, this picture. So you can kind of get an idea of what you might see. There's a squirrel in that picture too, right under the nest. But if you look more closely, my goodness, you can see that there are so many leaves. The squirrels work so hard to create that nest. And my friends, there is a fancy word for what that nest is called. And I'm going to have somebody share that word with you. So. Here we go, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Ugh, back to Raya Papaya. This camera is, <laughs> there we go. Now it's pointing towards me. And who's gonna share the word with you? <laughs> Squirrely, Squirrely's come to visit. And Squirrely says, Squirrely says that she is so excited you're learning about her nests because she works so hard to make them. And her nest is called a dray, right? Yeah, her nest is called a dray. Squirrely, you're getting too close. Squirrely, you silly squirrel. And I want all of you to repeat after me. A squirrel nest is called a dray. One, two, three. A squirrel nest is called a dray. Very good. Squirrely likes that. Good job. So if you can imagine being a squirrel, you don't need to stand up for this one. Oops. So if you imagine being a squirrel, and when squirrels climb up into their dray, <laughs> they will cuddle up in there. And in the winter, when it's windy and cold, they're nice and cozy in their dray. And so I want you to imagine you're climbing into a dray and you're going to close your eyes and take a squirrel nap. And while you're sleeping cozy, cozy inside your dray, then you're imagining, you're having dreams about running around with your squirrel friends, your bushy tail, <laughs> um, chasing after you, not chasing after you, but being behind you. And you're so cozy and warm in your dray, even though you're hearing all that wind outside. And then you wake up, everybody open your eyes and wake up and do a big squirrel stretch. Ah. Good job, everybody. And then, we're not going to right now, but it would be time for the squirrel to run around and look for some, maybe some nuts, some food that they can find, like the seed we saw earlier. All right, Squirrely, you can go back to running around looking for food. Bye, everybody wave bye to Squirrely. 
<laughs> All right. So good to know we should keep our eyes at the treetops. Now, there are a couple of other things I want to show you before we wrap up. And one of them is something, oh my gosh, what, what? How many toes, my friends? Do you see that? There's another track over there. Two toes. We're seeing more deer tracks. <laughs> that wasn't what I wanted to show you, but that's so cool. Those were excellent tracks to see. So what I wanted to show you was this beautiful piece of evidence. What on earth could this be? If you said bird's nest, you are absolutely correct, my friends. This is a bird's nest and birds build nests so they can lay eggs and they're young. Their babies can grow up in the nest before they learn to fly. And there are so many birds out in cities and in forests like where I am and all these different places that they need lots of spaces to build their nests. And they also, we talked about food earlier and a bird pecking into, uh, into that plant to get insects. They also sometimes will need to find food, right? Every day. So maybe they eat insects. Maybe they eat seeds and they look for shrubs and bushes and different flowers that have made seeds. And sometimes maybe people have bird feeders out for them. So I'd like to show you a bird feeder that we have set up. I'll show you how it looks and then oops, show you how you can see who's landing on it. And I would like to also mention, if anybody does have questions, don't forget that you can put them in the chat. You can let us know where you're from. I should have mentioned that earlier. You can name your school in the chat. So out where I'm pointing is a bird feeder. We have a camera right next to the bird feeder and Jasmine can show us what that camera is seeing. So as they're flying in to grab a little seed and then flying out again, we get to see these beautiful chickadees who are looking for food and they're getting a little treat from us today. Now chickadees make a cool, cool sound. They have a couple of sounds. One of them is, hey, sweetie, hey, sweetie. Ooh, that's a nuthatch. Everybody repeat after me. Hey, sweetie, hey, sweetie. <laughs> Good job. They also go chickadee dee dee. So can you make that sound? Chickadee dee dee. Chickadee dee dee. <laughs> Very good, my friends. There's even a chickadee on the camera. That's so funny. Now I'm noticing the time. We are going to take some questions in a moment. But if you're a teacher and you're thinking we need to get going, then it has been wonderful to have you here. And we are so happy that you joined us. And um, we encourage you to get outside, look for some drays, look for birds, listen for birds, and um, have a wonderful day. If you have questions, then now's the time. So Jasmine, I'm wondering if there are any questions that have showed up in the chat. I know teachers are probably busy with their students, maybe haven't typed questions in there. Let's see. Yeah, I haven't seen any questions yet, Rye, but I have a question for you if I can ask you one. Great. My question is, Brian, I've been dying to know this. In all the years that we've been friends, you've never told me, what is your favorite bird? My favorite bird. I have so many favorite birds. Oh, goodness. Hmm. One of my favorite birds is a little tiny, tiny brown bird. And they are called brown creepers because they creep up trees. So they'll find a tree trunk and they'll kind of creep up the tree and they'll go around the tree trunk as they creep and you can barely see them because the tree trunk looks kind of brown sometimes they're gray or green as well but they look kind of brown and these birds blend right in so the brown creeper is one of my very favorite birds <laughs> amazing thank you so much for telling me <laughs> now these chickadees oh there we go i saw it on the camera and then it jumped onto the feeder and now it's on the roof. These chickadees, what they do when they go get a seed is they'll grab a seed and they will um, hide the seed somewhere in a little hole in a tree or in a little hole between some rocks or somewhere. And that way later on, when maybe they have trouble finding food, they have the seeds that they've hidden. So it's like they're putting 
food into their cupboard, only their cupboard is all over the place. <laughs> and they have to memorize where they put all that food. Isn't that amazing? So cool. That See if they come so back. Cool. Raya, I have another question for you. I'm wondering, are there, you know your tracks really well. You showed us a deer track, you showed us rabbit tracks, but are there ever any tracks that you find that you just don't know who made them or where they're coming oh from? Oh my goodness, yes. So that happens quite a bit actually, because sometimes tracks can look really different. Remember how I was looking for tracks with two toes and I couldn't find some of them, even though I knew they were deer tracks. So Jasmine, maybe you can show that picture that I sent you earlier. And I, I saw these tracks and I thought, what? Was that a snake? We don't have winter snakes here in Canada. And then I realized, wait a second. These tracks must have been made by little balls of snow that rolled down a hill. But at first it was such a mystery. And the only way I figured it out was by looking at the bottom of the tracks, like where they, land, where they stopped and seeing the balls of snow. So sometimes there are real mysteries that are pretty tricky to solve. I'm also going to show you, I'm gonna draw some tracks in the snow. So I'm gonna show you that some tracks, we remember the deer had two toes. A raccoon has five toes. So if you see a five toe track, that's a raccoon. Some animals, you'll see a track that just has, let's see if I can draw this, three toes and then one at the back. So an animal with three toes and one at the back, that is probably a type of bird. So that is another kind of track you might come across. Some animals have one toe. What animal has one toe? Well, that would be like a horse, maybe. <laughs> we don't have wild horses in Ontario, but horses have one toe. So it's a good thing you, are, you know your numbers, because by knowing your numbers, you can help yourself figure out what animals are around. That's so cool. Thank you so much for sharing. We have some questions that have come in from students. And so the first question I want to ask you is, when snow kind of or rain comes down on the footprints, do the animal tracks get buried? Yes, that's a good question. So if you remember the rabbit tracks I showed you, they were kind of hard to tell that they were rabbit tracks because they've been there for a few days. And I think part of it that is that the snow has melted a bit, but there's also maybe been a little bit of rain that's landed on them and changed the shape of them. So definitely, if, if um, there are tracks around and then it's rained, it can really change what the tracks look like. Mm -hmm. Good question. And more snow means it buries them all together. <laughs> for sure. That's a great question. Thank you so much for asking questions, my friends. We have another one that's come in that's asking, those tracks that you showed us, were those real footsteps? Yes, they were real footsteps. And I can even, I'm going to walk over here and show you a few more in a field that I have not walked in. So I'm stepping in some footprints I made earlier, but then I didn't go farther. And I'm going to turn the camera around. And we'll see if you can make out what I'm talking about. So these are these are actually human ones on this side. But can you see that there are like a few stripes of tracks there? I, gosh, it might be hard to see. But there are some different tracks that have been made by squirrels and deer and rabbits. I'm pointing really high <laughs> um, all over the ground here. So there are certainly a lot of tracks from animals who live in these woods. And sometimes, oh, this is fun. So these are older tracks. There's been snow that's piled in there. But sometimes you'll almost be able to see that there are drag marks between the tracks so that the animal's dragging their feet when they go to the next spot. And sometimes, Jasmine, can you show the picture with a hole in it? Sometimes you will see a hole at the end of the tracks. And this one shows mice that went running into the hole. And you can even see those little tiny drag marks. Those are actually their tail dragging in the snow. So yes, all these pictures and all these tracks we've shown you are real tracks from wildlife from animals. Oh, that is so cool. And those questions came from Morton Way Public School in Brampton. Thank you so much. Oh, hey, Morton you. Way. Hello, everybody at Morton Way. <laughs> um, we actually have another question from Morton Way. And their students are asking, why do birds say, hey, sweetie, hey, sweetie? Why do birds make that noise? Oh, that's a good question. Yes. So. Birds, sometimes people think birds just have one type of sound, but they have different ones. I mentioned the chickadee, sometimes they go chickadee dee dee, and sometimes they go, hey, sweetie, hey, sweetie. Well, they go, hey, sweetie, when they're looking for new friends. 
So when they're trying to find new friends, they will make that sound and it kind of brings friends closer together. Um, when they go chickadee dee dee, sometimes they're just chatting with each other. But if they go chickadee dee 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 with a whole lot of D's, that means there is danger nearby and they're warning each other. Can I ask all of you to do that after me? We'll do we'll do something like ten or twelve D's. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> that was so many. <laughs> if you hear that, then the chickadee is maybe warning other chickadees that there is a hawk nearby, or maybe there are people with pets with dogs and they're scared the dogs might eat them. So, yeah, call lots of cool different sounds that birds make for different reasons. That is so cool. Um, I see one more question in the chat. And they're asking, do we actually see deer here in the GTA and in Toronto? Do they actually live here? Absolutely. So in the GTA, Toronto, Brampton, um, Mississauga, Markham, York, all these spaces, there are deer in the city, especially in the ravines. So big valleys where there are rivers running in the middle of it. Sometimes the rivers even dry up a little bit, but as long as they're is a place for the deer to get water and a place for the deer to get shelter in the trees and kind of hide, then you can find deer in a city. Super cool. It is so cool to find out about animals that we wouldn't normally think might live in an urban space like Toronto. It's so exciting. And that question came from Kanav. Thank you so much for, for asking that question. Um, well, thank you. I think that's all the questions that I've seen come in, Rai, but thank you so much for taking us outside today. It's been amazing. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And I will mention, I shouldn't have walked over here. Um, my message to you is when you are outside next time, walking around your neighborhood, I want you to try to find tracks, see if you can spot any birds and look way, way up in the trees and see if you can find a big pile of leaves in that tree. It's hard to see on the screen, but there is a dray right up there. It's actually a huge dray, a big squirrel nest right up in that tree. So I challenge you to try to spot drays when you head outside. Teachers, you can tell some of your um, teacher colleagues that on March 9th, we have a live stream for grades four to six, and it's about connecting to nature. Um, in an artistic way, so people can join for that. Keep your eyes open on the TRCA events page for that. And it has been so wonderful, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for playing along and pretending to be all these animals. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Goodbye, my friends.